Sure, eviction laws vary from county to county, but they still follow the same general required eviction process. Fill out the forms, serve the tenant, attend the trial, and wait for the court order. Every eviction process is different and dependent on the lease or rental agreement signed by the tenant and the landlord. It is always best to exercise meticulous file keeping to avoid errors that could be exploited by the tenant. This video will be detailing a summary for landlords to refer to when evicting a tenant. Be sure to confirm procedures with your justice court to make sure the entire process goes as smoothly as possible. So now that we've covered that, let's dive further. Starting with some common eviction reasons. Number one, non-payment of rent. Landlords can evict the tenant for failing to pay the rent. Paying rent before being evicted usually stops the eviction process. Rent is usually considered late a day past its due. A grace period may be available if stated in the lease or rental agreement. Before they can start the eviction process, a landlord must give the tenant an official written seven-day notice to quit. The landlord is under no obligation to let the tenant pay rent they may owe. However, landlords may give a second chance should they wish to do so. Number two, violation of the lease or rental agreement. Aside from being unable to pay rent, a tenant can be evicted for violating the terms of the lease. The rental lease agreement has to be upheld by both tenant and the landlord for the entire duration of their stay. Lease or rental agreements may vary from tenant to tenant. If a tenant violates any terms of the lease agreement, the landlord must issue a 30-day notice to quit. The landlord is not legally obligated to allow the tenant to resolve the violation before presenting them with the notice. Lease violations may include damage to the rental unit, smoking in non-smoking areas, and keeping pets in pet-free properties. If the tenant remains inside the rental unit by the end of the 30 days, then the landlord may continue with the eviction. Number three, conducting illegal activity. If a tenant has engaged in illegal behavior within the property, the landlord must give the tenant an official written notice called a seven day notice to quit. Examples of illegal activity includes, but is not limited to, homicide, prostitution, theft, violence or assault, possession and or firing of an illegal firearm involvement in the creation, distribution, or consumption of a controlled substance. A landlord must keep an eye on their tenants to make sure illegal behavior does not go unnoticed. Number four, committing major property damage. In this case, tenants are usually not allowed to renew their lease. The landlord has to issue a seven day notice to quit. Examples of such behavior include damaging the electrical wiring of a unit, ruining the plumbing fixtures of a unit, they have no choice. The tenant must leave the premises before the end of the notice period to avoid eviction. The landlord can continue with the eviction process if the tenant refuses to leave after the seven day grace period. Number five, refusal to comply with maintenance. Sometimes rental units require maintenance to get rid of pests such as cockroaches or rays, particularly when there is an infestation. New Hampshire law takes into account the health and maintenance codes. If a tenant violates any of these codes, the landlord has to issue a 30-day notice to quit. A tenant can be evicted for refusing to comply if they receive the correct eviction notice detailing what the tenant has to do. More than enough time has passed for the notice period. The tenant refuses to comply with obvious intent. The tenant must move out of the rental unit within 30 days. If they're unable to do so, the landlord may continue filing for eviction. Number six, refusal to allow for temporary relocation. A tenant must be relocated if there are any hazardous materials in the rental unit that could harm their health. For example, a situation that requires a tenant to temporarily relocate would be the presence of lead paint within the property. Should the tenant refuse to relocate, the landlord can give them a seven day notice to quit that requires them to move out within seven days or else the eviction process will continue. If the tenant continues staying in the rental unit, the landlord may continue with the eviction process. Number seven, non-renewal of the lease after the rental period ends. In New Hampshire, the landlord cannot evict a tenant or force them to vacate the property without a probable clause. As long as the tenant does not violate any rules, they can stay until their rental period ends. But if they stay on the property even a day after their lease or rental agreement ends and they haven't arranged for renewal, the landlord can issue a written notice to move. How to file a complaint. The eviction process can only begin after the issuance of the appropriate written eviction notice. Enough notice time must have been allowed before filing for eviction. The eviction process is as follows. Proceed to the justice court the rental unit belongs to, file a complaint, and pay the fees. Timeline. 
It takes about 7 to 30 days from the issuance of the notice to vacate or quit. Notice to comply. For filing an eviction with the court, you need to issue the tenant a notice to comply. How to serve a tenant. An official from the court delivers the court order, which is the summons for the eviction hearing and the complaint to the tenant. There are several methods available, personal service, substituted service. If any of those mentioned methods fail, other methods may be taken with the approval of a judicial officer. After serving the summons and complaint, the tenant must file for an appearance in court by the return date. This return date is found on the summons. An appearance is a document that the tenant files within the court so that they may be given permission to show up to the hearing. If the tenant fails to file an appearance to the court, a default judgment may be given in favor of the landlord. Timeline. The documents should be served to the tenant as soon as the summons and complaint are issued by the judicial court. The tenant has seven days to file for an appearance, otherwise they may lose the case by default. Either party may request for a postponement or a continuance for a maximum number of 30 days. Asking for possession. Filing a motion to obtain judgment and get a judgment for possession. The landlord has to provide a strong argument backed up by solid evidence against the tenant. Should the tenant fail to show up to the hearing, the landlord wins by default. If the landlord does not win, they can still appeal within seven days post-judgment for reconsideration. Next procedure, if tenant disagreed and replied. In the state of New Hampshire, a reply from the tenant is necessary for a court date to be scheduled. It is held 10 days after the tenant files for an appearance in court. The landlord needs to support the claim with evidence and show it during the hearing. This could include, but is not limited to the following. Copy of the deed and lease, rent receipts and ledgers, bank statements, witnesses, photo and video documentation of the violations. If the judge rules in favor of the tenant, the landlord has seven days to appeal the ruling and vice versa. However, in cases about non-payment of rent, the tenant and the landlord have the option to settle their issues outside of court. If landlord and tenant come to an agreement before a writ of possession is issued, then the entire process is stopped. Timeline. The eviction hearing is scheduled 10 days after the tenant files for an appearance in court. Getting possession. After the landlord wins the case, provided that the tenant does not appeal for reconsideration, a writ of possession is issued seven days after the judgment is passed in favor of the landlord. The writ of possession gives the tenant a maximum of seven days to vacate the rental unit. However, if the judgment issued was a default judgment because the tenant was unable to file for an appearance or does not appear to the eviction hearing, the writ of possession is issued in five days. Once the writ of possession is issued, the tenant has a maximum of five days to vacate the property. Move out process. Once judgment is passed in favor of the landlord, the tenant has to move out within seven days. However, the court can decide to grant a three month stay of execution if the tenant is deserving of it. Only applicable for a good cause. Only the sheriff or appropriate authorities are allowed to evict the tenant by force. Even if the landlord wins the case, they are not allowed to engage in illegal methods of eviction. Timeline. Tenants have five to seven days to vacate the rental unit before they will be forcibly removed. Any possessions left behind will only be stored for a minimum of seven days. New Hampshire eviction process timeline. On average, it would take anywhere between four weeks to eight weeks for a complete eviction process. This does not include the extra time it will take when either party files for an appeal, continuance, or stay of execution. How to keep good records. If the tenant disagrees with the eviction request and they reply to the court, it's super important that you keep extremely good records of everything so you can provide proof to the judge and win your case. This part can either make or break your entire eviction request in the event of a dispute. You can stay organized by keeping a physical paper trail, scanning documents, backups, or property management software. Evidence to show for not paying rent. If the tenant doesn't pay rent and they dispute that claim, it's important that you show the judge the following. Your lease agreement, all payments, any payment returns, and all messages. Evidence to show for lease violations. If you are evicting the tenant for lease violations, for example, noise complaints or unauthorized pets, it's important to show proof from any of the following methods. Security cameras, photos and videos, and your lease terms. And that's a wrap for today's video on the New Hampshire eviction process. 
We hope you found this video informative and insightful, but hang on, there's still more to uncover about the eviction process in New Hampshire. If you want to explore this topic further, we've got you covered. In the description below, you'll find a link to a blog post that dives deep into the eviction process in the state of New Hampshire. It covers everything from notice requirements and legal proceedings to tenant rights and landlord responsibilities. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.